So I'm not here to tell you that you need to cut things a certain way or a certain size or be this good at cutting things to be a good cook. Clearly there are so many cases of people who are grandmas who have arthritis. My mom has arthritis. She, she can't cut things into fine dices. I get it. That's not what this video is about. Ultimately, knife skills give you control, it creates faster prep times. It allows you to whip together meals quicker. And really at the end of the day, kind of can make food taste better. Size and shape dictates the texture and texture determines a perceived taste. So the size and shape of things does matter. It can benefit your food. Learning how to control that can make your food better. So if you're the person who wants to kind of continue to expand their journey in the kitchen and, and get better at all these things incrementally over time, then this is a good episode for you. Especially if you like salsa, because today we're gonna use pico de gallo to showcase why size and shape matters. So let's just jump right into it. Pico de gallo consists of tomatoes, onion, jalapeno, garlic, cilantro, lime juice. Think about it, if I cut the tomato super small and then I cut the onion and the jalapeno super big, is that really gonna be delicious? You're gonna have this big bite of jalapeno, this big bite of onion. It's gonna be harsh because the lime can't really penetrate the thicker vegetables like it can a smaller cut vegetable. So if we can control things, maybe I wanna cut the tomato a little bit bigger and cut the jalapeno smaller and the onion maybe a little bit larger than the jalapeno but a little bit smaller than the tomato. When you have knife skills, you can control all of those things. So let's just get started and we'll talk about some ways that you can cut things, different ways of holding the knife and um, we'll make some pico de gallo. First we need the tomato and the, the type of tomato again matters like it did in sauce in our last episode. And we're gonna use Roma tomatoes, plum tomatoes. Plum tomatoes, Roma tomatoes, they're the same thing. It's just a variety of plum. And we use it because it's meatier. You might wanna use like a, an heirloom tomato, but they're a little bit too juicy and you don't want it a, a really juicy salsa. We want it kind of like a, a chunkier textured salsa where we control the amount of liquid. So the plum tomatoes work and you might have to get other tomatoes if you can't find these. Maybe they have a little bit more juice and a little bit more seeds, but we can talk about that about workarounds. But let's just talk about cutting the Roma tomatoes. First thing is we need a sharp knife. So whatever your knife of choice is, make sure it's nice and sharp. Hone before and after every use, and it'll keep your knives sharper for longer without having to sharpen them on a whetstone. Every time you do that, make sure you give it a nice wipe so there's no shards that you're getting in the food. And then we hold the knife like this. We take a pinch and I pinch with the blade, my thumb and my index finger. And then with the, the back three fingers, I grab on to the handle. So basically I'm holding at like the, the center balancing point essentially and using that as an extension of my arm. So I can rock like that, I can chop. It's really in control. It's like kind of like a part of my hand. The key thing you want to know when you, if you don't want to cut yourself is start with your middle finger and then take this joint and bend it. Your knife blade runs just like a deli slicer would. Just runs right across that knuckle and unless you go above it, that's when you're at risk of cutting yourself. When you, when you need to go higher, instead of using this knuckle as the, the guide, you're sort of bending even more and relying on the top knuckle. And now you can still cut yourself. It's not foolproof, but you have to be extra careful. And when you have a bigger thing to cut, you have to go a little slower. But when you're doing small things, there's a very small chance of you cutting yourself. As long as all these fingers and your thumb are out of the way, tucked back. And so a lot of people, when they cut, they cut down, but that's not working with the knife. To work with the knife, you want to start with the point down and push forward and you can come back. Then we can do the same over here. And so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna just kinda make little planks of tomato across like this. And I'm gonna push forward, and then come down and back. Push forward and come down and back. Push forward and come down. 
And now what I'll do is keep a few stacked and then just go through and then cut little planks, turn them over, and then cut into dices. That's one way to do it. What it does give you is it gives you seeds and it gives you lots of juice. If it's on a chip or it's in a taco, it's gonna sit nicely with all of the other ingredients and they'll all blend instead of them all sticking out at once. Now you got beautiful dice and you can go through and you'll probably need a few of these tomatoes. Now, I know there are picky eaters out there that don't like seeds and they don't like that kind of jelly that's in the center. And maybe you have a tomato that has just got way too much jelly and way too many seeds. I'm gonna show you a way of removing that so that you're just getting the flesh of the Roma tomato and not all of that juice. And basically you just cut it in half and then cut it again in quarters like that. And then you'll go through and you see the flesh right here and all the jelly on top. You go through, take your knife and push it down and then just remove it. Keeping pressure, the knife pressure down on the flesh like this and just go. And then you have a nice kind of piece of the flesh that you could just cut into strips, whichever size you want, and then cut into a perfect dice. Taking the knife and moving forward, not down like that, forward. And there you really have perfect dice. And then what's left is kind of just maybe a little bit of flesh, but it's kind of this like greenish flesh with a lot of this jelly. Honestly, that's a decision that's up to you whether you want to remove this or not, but those are the two ways you can dice. Now, if you're using a big knife like this, you could always use a paring knife, but if you want to use a big knife like this, you always choke up, make the knife a little bit smaller in your hand. And then you can kind of go through and it can almost act a little bit like a little bit of a smaller knife. And then go back to big knife. One thing to note about when you're removing this jelly is you're sacrificing a little bit of that flavor. There's a lot of flavor in that jelly. The reason you do this is because you don't really love the seeds. The seed texture can kind of get in the way of some things when you're just looking for the meat of the tomato. So just be aware it's, you're doing whatever you want to do. But you can always save this stuff. You could you make sauce with it. So you can save this and freeze it or something like that. This method is definitely for the picky eaters. And as a former picky eater, I like to kind of throw some bones to you guys. Let's face it, at the end of the day, a lot of people like things cut small. The bite is just better. You get more flavors in one bite rather than just like a thick piece of tomato, a thick piece of onion, and a thick piece of jalapeno. It's more about balance than anything. And I will say that the same size probably matters more than the same shape. So just keep that in mind. So now I've got a red onion. And I, at the market, they have these small little onions. I don't need a ton of onion. So it's nice to be able to pick up these small ones. So first we're gonna take the, the top and the bottom off. Start keeping all your onion skins and stuff like that for Brodo, because it's Brodo season coming up. We're gonna, what, how do we wanna cut this? In a fine dice. So we're gonna cut it in half. Take off that paper and like that first kind of rubbery layer. I always like to take that off. Now you guys know the way that I normally cut an onion. The horizontal cuts and then the fine cuts across and the size and thickness that you make those cuts is gonna determine what fine dice there is. But I'm gonna show you guys an easier way because literally every video I've used an onion I've shown that way. Today I'm gonna to show you a different way where I'm gonna take off the root end now. And then what I'm gonna do is cut them in half. Let me get you zoomed in over here. Right, so I've got this quarter of an onion right here and I'm gonna divide it in half from its layers. So I'm into two layers like this. I'm gonna put them down and then I can go through. Turn it. And you have a nice fine dice. Now maybe you're still not comfortable doing that, but you still want a small dice or even a finer dice for something like that. You could just kind of roughly go through and give some slices like this or whatever, however you want. Just be really rough about it. And then go through, give it another rough dice the opposite way and take your hand and just start to process it. Going back and forth, different directions, get different angles. 
still pinching, hand safely like that, and then you're just kind of working your way through like a, a food processor would. But once you hit it enough times from enough angles, it's pretty easily processed. Oh God. Oh God. No, I don't want too much onion in my pico. I might kind of hold that off to the side. That looks like it's gonna be enough. Again, you don't want to bite into like a big hunk of onion. Maybe you do, then cool, that's on you. But I do want that onion flavor. So the smaller I cut an onion, the more pungent of an onion flavor I'm gonna get, but in a smaller package. So I don't need that big texture that is gonna kind of actually be a bad texture, a big hunk of onion. I want that small dice that's gonna distribute the flavor into the salsa better. Give that a mix and see how it looks. You can use your eyes after you've mixed it to kind of check out the proportions. And uh, here, a little bit more. Yeah, that looks better. The jalapeno, the essential flavor in the pico de gallo. And another thing that's essential for you to understand how you want it cut. If you're gonna give somebody who doesn't love spicy food a big hunk of this with a lot of the seeds and the ribs in, something that's bigger than, you know, anything bigger than this, it's gonna be a problem for some people. So this in particular is gonna want, you're gonna wanna go smaller depending on who you are. Maybe you kinda like jalapenos that way. Again, this is where control comes in. It's not that you need to do it this way, it's that maybe you might want to do it this way and you just didn't know how. So that's what this video is about. So the way that I like to get the seeds out is I'll take the top off. I'm gonna put a glove on just in case. I'm crying and I'm just gonna touch my eye, I know it. I'm gonna sort of take my knife, start off here, and I'm gonna shave downward. And then I can start to peek in and see where I can cut. So I'll go in there and I'll just cut around the seeds, essentially. Then you got the ribs and the seeds remaining. You could also do it like that. I don't like cutting the jalapeno skin side up. It's harder to bust through, even in a sharp knife sometimes. So I go in and, you know, I could cut it like that into like a big piece. You know, that's gonna be tough to eat. But if we go into smaller strips, you know, whatever side you kind of want to determine, and then you kind of can go into whatever size dice you want. Be careful of the juice spitting into your eye. But there you go, you get a nice fine jalapeno dice. It's gonna match the size of everything else in the bowl. If not, just a tad bit smaller. We just don't want it much bigger than anything else in there. Okay, this is looking good. You see how like the tomato is like the max size and that's kind of like the lead? Everything else falls behind it a little bit. The star is the tomato, the sidekicks are the onion and the jalapeno. I've got a garlic clove. We're gonna grate this garlic in because I don't wanna bite on any raw garlic. This is a, a salsa fresca, a fresh salsa. So the things in it are mainly raw. So when I put this garlic in it, if I grate it, I'm gonna get that intense garlic flavor, just a small amount of garlic, but there's no, gonna be no actually physical bite of garlic, which is personally what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna just grate it in. Work that garlic in there. Then we got our cilantro, and contrary to how everything else goes, I like the cilantro to be rustic. So I just kind of tear it in. The, that's the kind of dichotomy between the finely chopped stuff and kind of like a rustically torn cilantro in there. The stem's okay too. The stem's got a lot of flavor in it, and if you don't like cilantro, that's really too bad. Uh, parsley maybe, you could use parsley, but cilantro is like such a key flavor in some of these recipes. It's really hard to replace. If you want to chop the, the cilantro, by all means, you can chop it finely. You can leave it rustic. Again, decisions you're making along the way that give you control. Now the final touches before we let this sit and marinate and marry, and get kind of get to know each other, is we're gonna salt it. We haven't salted it yet, and I wanted to wait till everything's kind of in there so I can really get a good gauge of how seasoned everything is. Salt's also gonna break down some of the onions and the, it's gonna make it less pungent, and so is the acid, the lime juice. This is gonna kind of soften everything up, marry everything together. 
So I got a juicy one here, so I might just need one lime. Now we just need to give this a nice little sit and uh, I don't know, 30 minutes to an hour, probably a couple hours is best, but I mean, you can eat it now and it'll probably be fine, but it does need a little bit of time to kind of come together. So we're just gonna let this chill. Been about 40 minutes, I couldn't wait any longer. Sweet, you get the acid, but it's not too lemony. I can feel the jalapeno, but it's not punching you. I think it needs salt. Whenever it's kind of like feeling a little flat, but like tasty, that's usually a sign that it needs salt. I think we're ready to go. This goes on lots of things, but today we're just gonna serve it with some chips. So you see how so much can fit on a chip? With so many different flavors, all of them not competing for space. They're kind of able to stack on top of each other. Just flavor, right? Instead of like big pieces of tomatoes that are falling off the chip. Like when I go to dip, that's the kind of bite I want to take. Forget about it. The reason we cut things and think about cutting things is because we're thinking about the end bite. This bite right here is why we go that extra step. So when I say, you know, the, the knife skills are important, I hope you know it's meant to be said, not in an like intimidating or belittling way, but because I feel like it's important. It was important to me when I learned. I didn't wanna just wing it. I wanted to know how to do it. And that's why I kind of teach it because again, I don't think of myself as a chef. I think of myself as a home cook. I just may be in a different phase of the home cook than other people, but that experience has allowed me to understand that I kind of want to have that control and I kind of feel like other people might want to know that as well and maybe build towards that as well. So if you feel like you don't really care or want to pay much mind into the knife skills and all that kind of stuff, by all means, go ahead, you do you, that's totally fine. But if you're like me and you want to be able to sort of have control over the size and shape of the things that you cut and be able to manipulate things in a more advanced way, then I highly recommend you pick up a knife and slowly train yourself how to use it properly and with skill. Yeah, I got the shirt back on. It's already cold today for some reason. I don't understand. If you want, merch is always available down in the link below. There should be like a pictures of the merch below my videos on Teespring. So go check those out. Hate less, cook more, sweatshirts, all that stuff's available there. And I'm going to be updating it soon with uh, hopefully some fun new designs. So go take a look. What do you guys think? Do you guys care about knife skills? Do you think it's important? I'd love to hear what you think down in the description. Thanks to all the patrons who support this show. Scrolling up on the screen right now, if you'd like to be a patron, there's a link down in the description below. Otherwise, that's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself. Yeah.